It's crazy to think it's already been three years since we bought this piece of land, back when it was just a completely empty grass paddock. And since then, bit by bit, we've been working to transform it into a place full of diversity, by planting things like rare and unusual fruits, right through to the more common fruit trees, as well as medicinal plants, native trees, and vegetable gardens. So today I thought I'd take you for a bit of a look around and share with you some of the projects we've been working on over the winter. And we're in spring now, so everything's starting to take off and burst into light. One of the main focuses over the winter was developing this area of food forest and it's still very much a work in progress but we're slowly getting there. And so originally we just started with like individual fruit trees that had been dotted around last year and we wanted to start joining these fruit trees up and forming these islands filled with mulch that we can then plant a whole bunch of stuff in between all the fruit trees. You know things like berry bushes, support trees for the fruit trees, uh, ground covers, a herb layer, just all that kind of thing planted all around densely and you know turn it into that kind of food forest where there's just tons and tons of plants and diversity. It was a little bit of a challenge trying to find the configuration of how we wanted all these islands to interlink and how we wanted the paths to work because I did sort of want it looking kind of natural and be able to meander through all these paths but also have kind of good access as well to the areas that you want to get to. And I think it's actually worked out pretty well. There was, I think, one little pomegranate tree that I had to move that was right in the middle of where I wanted a path. But aside from that, it's worked out pretty well. And basically what we've done is just laid some cardboard down in between the fruit trees where we wanted these islands to be planted. And what the cardboard does is just suppresses the grass and kills the weeds. And then on top of the cardboard, we added a whole bunch of mulch. And the mulch we use is just this arborist mulch here. So it's just filled with like leaves, branches, sticks, twigs. There's a little worm in there and it eventually breaks down, helps to build soil and it protects the soil life and holds in moisture as well as plenty of other benefits that I've talked about before. The cardboard usually takes around six weeks to two months to fully break down and by that point the grass and weeds underneath has fully died and been decomposed by worms and other soil life. But we did it in the winter ready to then plant in the spring. So now we'll just kind of pull the mulch apart, dig into the topsoil and sometimes I'll add a little bit of compost to the hole and then plant the plant straight into that. For the areas that we wanted to plant out straight away we did it slightly differently. So we started still with the cardboard but on top of the cardboard we just put a nice layer of compost and then we could just plant directly into that with all sorts of our you know herb plants and different cuttings and strawberries and all that type of thing. And then on top of that I just put the mulch around. So that's kind of more of an instant way to just get it all in, get all the plants in. And you know doing it this way is just one way that you can do it. There's plenty of ways that you can set up a food forest and kind of change grass to an area that you want to plant a whole bunch of trees in. For us this is just kind of the easiest way and we're lucky here that we don't really have much invasive grasses or weeds that would get through the cardboard so it tends to work really effectively but some areas you know it may not work as well if you've got some really really bad weeds that will just keep coming up. In those cases you may need to kind of remove those weeds first. And this summer I'll definitely share with you how it's looking because hopefully by then we'll get a lot more plants in and get all those kind of bare mulch areas completely covered and filled with plants. My winter veggie garden started off with a bit of a disaster this year. I had a bunch of little seedlings that I had grown in punnets and I planted them all out in the autumn ready for the winter and that very same day the turkeys got in here and demolished it. So it turns out it's not just goji berry plants they like but I ended up just direct sowing most of the seeds straight into the garden and it ends up turning out pretty well. And as for the turkeys they luckily no longer have access to this area, lucky for me anyway, so they can't destroy my crops again. They now live out in the paddocks with the sheep and they also live in the fenced off native areas that we've got around our property as well. But yeah this garden's been awesome and we've been able to enjoy plenty of greens through the winter. Things like spinach, mescaline, coriander, celery, silver beet, as well as a bunch of brassicas as well which I always grow through winter. Things like broccoli, kale, cauliflower, radishes and all that type of thing. It's all planted pretty densely but I think that's really helped with the intense winds that we've had here over the winter. It's so exposed here that the winds just smash against these plants but it's kind of created a bit of a sheltered microclimate for some of the plants within here and they've all been able to sort of hold each other up rather than just getting smashed as individual plants. And I think as well because they're planted closely together the roots are able to interlink and, and anchor themselves into the soil. And I don't reckon it's decreased the crop yield at all either. I think probably quite the opposite because the plants have really been able to support each other and continue growing even with some really kind of intense weather. 
it's all going to seed now as we come into spring, but the insects have been really enjoying it, which is great. And a lot of this is going to be coming out very soon and getting replaced with all my summer vegetables. I just planted this little fruit tree the other day and it's called a guabiju and it comes from the high altitude forests of Brazil and other surrounding South American countries. And the cool thing about these is that they can handle around negative eight degrees Celsius once they're mature, which is pretty great for the climate that I live here. And from seed after about four to six years, they'll be producing these little purple sweet fruits, which look a little bit like a cherry guava. And if you're wondering where I got the seeds from, from these, for any Kiwis out there, I got these from Marvelous Fruits, which are a company here in New Zealand that supply all sorts of rare and unusual seeds and plants. So I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to check them out. But yeah, this is a really cool plant. I'm looking forward to growing this on and seeing how it goes. I've also planted these silverberry trees and these can handle temperatures down to about negative 20 degrees Celsius and they produce a little red fruit with a sort of a silver marbling on the skin and they've got quite a large seed too which is also edible. And the fruit aren't something I believe that are really hugely sought after, they're more of something as a bit of a garden snack. But there's more reasons to grow this other than just the fruit. One benefit is that they're nitrogen fixing, so it means they can take nitrogen from the atmosphere and fix it in nodules down on the roots, which can benefit other plants that are planted near these. This is my red banana passion fruit and it did survive the winter so I'm super stoked with that. It's got a bit of a sheltered spot and it did get a little bit of winter damage but for the most part it's looking reasonably all good. Needs a bit of a prune up though but it has been flowering over the winter and into the spring as well. I have been going through and doing a little bit of hand pollination just to make sure that the flowers do set and it's been awesome to see that quite a few of the fruit have set on this vine so I'm really looking forward to trying these for the first time. I had a bit of a disaster years ago growing these where they just got smashed in the winter but here it's obviously just sheltered enough to survive. So these fruit should ripen and yeah I just really can't wait, it's going to be awesome. Over the winter we decided to plant up a garden completely dedicated just to animal food. So we used the area that we started the no-dig garden in last summer and we basically just laid down some fresh compost over the top. And then into that we planted it up with all sorts of vegetables from things like turnips, radishes, mesclun, silver beet, daikon radish, bok choy, just all that sort of thing. And it all grew pretty densely which was our aim because we knew we wanted to harvest from this area pretty often. So once it all started getting a bit bigger we slowly thinned parts out to feed to the animals which then allowed everything else to continue getting bigger. It was a pretty good way to be able to feed our sheep, turkeys and chickens an extra variety of greens through the winter when the grass doesn't grow as fast. And for our sheep we also fed out tree lucerne that we've grown as well as bamboo that we're able to cut from the farm next door. As you guys have probably guessed by now, I do like to propagate some of my own fruit trees. And this is a little fig tree here that I started from a cutting. And figs are quite a good one to get started from cuttings. They're not too hard to do. And it's been one way that we've been able to save quite a bit of money on fruit trees. As well as saving money, it's quite rewarding to do. And you can get some pretty cool varieties that way from friends and some things that you can't always get, you know, from the nursery. And I've also planted some fruit trees that I grew from seed, as well as ones that I grafted as well. But speaking of grafted fruit trees, let's go check out the triple grafted apple tree that I started in another video, and I'll show you how it's doing. As you can see, it's covered in flowers at the moment. It's got tons of them all over this tree. And I won't leave all these flowers on here to turn into fruit because it'll just be way too many. All the grafting points as well are looking nice and healthy and they've healed well. And as for the growth, you know, there was only this much of the actual cyan wood that I grafted on. And last summer it grew like all of that length there. So hopefully again this summer we'll get another bunch of good growth from this. And yeah, overall pretty happy with it. Unfortunately frost did completely kill this cherimoya tree, which I'm a bit gutted about since I did manage to get it through its first winter and it had been doing really well. But this past winter was a bit more severe in terms of frost and we just simply didn't give it enough protection. So you can see the bark is just like flaking off and it's just yeah, completely dead. I do have a few cherimoya seedlings though, so I'm hoping to establish more protected areas and microclimates to grow these. So we'll see how that goes, but I think it will be easier to achieve a microclimate when all the other trees continue to grow and mature over the years. 
My mountain papaya also didn't fare too well with the trunk of the tree completely melting from the frost. And this has happened to me before, like eight or nine years ago with one. And as long as the little bit at the base stays hard, then usually they will regrow. So as you can see, this one is re-sprouting. But I find the hardest part of growing these where I live is protecting them for long enough in order for the trunk to get nice and thick. It usually takes around three winters for the trunk to get thick enough so it doesn't completely freeze and melt in the winter. But I am determined to get one of these established, so we'll see how it goes. I've also got these oak leaved papaya and they're a little bit more cold hardy and they did handle the cold fairly well and they've just put out all new leaves after going fully dormant for the winter. As for the rest of the fruit trees that we've got planted down the other end, like pears, quinces and stone fruit, all those types of things, it's been really cool seeing them burst out into flower during spring and some in particular have just had an absolutely crazy amount of flowers covering the whole tree, like this hawada plum that I've got here. So I'm looking forward to getting a few fruits off some of the larger trees this year. And for the smaller trees that are much younger, I'll just be picking most of the fruit off to allow them to put more of their energy into growing and becoming a stronger tree. So we've got this strip of grass up our driveway, which we haven't fully decided what we're gonna do with this area yet. So in the meantime, we've just planted these tree lucerne up here. And in just six months, these have gone from knee height and some are now over six feet tall. So they're incredibly fast growing and we've planted these to give us some privacy from the neighbors and also just to add a little bit of an extra layer of wind protection. Plus it's good extra food for our sheep once we prune them back. We treat these more of just a temporary tree here though because they can be fairly short lived, but we do use them in so many ways since they grow so well. Plus they flower in the winter, which is a good extra food source for insects during that time. And we can easily propagate more trees as well when they set their seeds. You do just have to pour almost boiling water over the seeds though and leave them to soak overnight before planting them and that will just help to crack the outer shell of the seed which will then allow them to germinate. Anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this little update of the farm and if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up down below and I really hope to see you in the next one. All right have an awesome rest of your day. We'll catch you later. Hey doggies! Come on, come on. <laughs>